OPG. Now we start with the next topic, that is the cardiovascular system or the different types of circulations which are present in the body. It's not only the uh, blood circulation, but it includes many other circulations when we say circulatory system. For life to be maintained, why do we need a circulatory system? The composition and properties of the local fluid environment of the body cells must remain constant. That is, the composition of the cells must remain constant within certain limits. And this depends on the adequate circulatory system. Most important circulatory system is angiology. That is the blood vascular system. What exactly is the main blood vascular system? That is cells of the peripheral blood suspended in, that is the cells suspended in the plasma. They circulate throughout the body in the blood vascular system. Then this interstitial fluid uh, that passes out into the tissues that is returned back from the peripheral tissues to the vascular system via the veins and then it returns to the lymphatics and then that again goes and enters into the uh, vascular system. So it is a circulatory system or it is a circulation. It is a ring-like structure that means goes to the tissues from the uh, blood that is the blood vascular system and then from the peripheral tissues returns back to the vascular system after supplying the nutrition. Then there are different circulatory systems which are present. One is the blood vascular system, which is further divided into the system systemic, that is starting from A to Z. Then there is the pulmonary circulation, that is between the heart and the lymph, uh, the lungs, which is there. Then there is a system, what we call as portal circulation. This includes two sets of capillaries, which are there. One is the hepatic portal circulation that occurs between the liver and the vessels. Then there is one which is there between the hypophyseal system, that is the hypophysis cerebri or the pituitary gland, and then in the uh, kidney. So there are three systems in which there are two sets of capillaries which are present, and that system is called the portal system. And then there is the system, what we call as the lymphatic system. This is the major uh, circulatory system. Then there are small circulations as well, which are present in the body. That is your coronary circulation, the blood that flows, CSF that flows, perilymph in the eye, uh, sorry, ear, aqueous humor in the ear, eye, the synovial fluid in the joints, the silomic spaces, that is your uh, uh, pericardial, peritoneal, and the pleural fluids which are there. So these are smaller circulations which are also present other than the cardiovascular system. The circulatory system transports fluid throughout the body and consists of the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. Heart and blood vessels make up the major portion of the cardiovascular system which is there. Then there is the vascular circuit. You have two components in the circulation. One is the minor loop that is which is the pulmonary circulation from the right ventricle lungs, lungs back into the left atrium of the heart. This is also called the pulmonary circuit and also is the minor loop that is the smaller one. Then there's the larger one from the left ventricle to the right atrium. This is your main systemic circulation which is also given the name as the major loop. Then there are certain vessels which start from the heart and then they return back to the heart as well. So it's from the center to the periphery. Blood vessels show three modifications. One is the number is going to increase. Then there is the diameter is going to decrease as you go downwards. That is arteries, large arteries, medium-sized arteries, small arteries, arterioles. Then you have these capillaries, capillaries, then into venules, venules, into smaller veins, medium-sized, large veins, and then back into the heart. So this is how the diameter decreases and then ultimately it increases back. So and then the number in the capillaries increases. Larger vessels are small in uh, number, but the capillaries are larger as compared to the uh, larger vessels. Then the diameter decreases and walls of the arteries decrease. That is at the capillary level, you just have the simple squamous epithelium, which lines, whereas in the larger vessels, you have those three layers. That is a tunica intima media and external the adventitia. So large arteries are basically a popliteal layer or thoracic, the single veins draining along with it. Those veins which travel along with the arteries, they are called your vena comitants. That is one artery and two veins on either side of the arteries they travel and these are given the name as vena comitants and then certain amount of nervous tissue or the nerves also, they travel along with the arteries. So that is what we're going to call as the neurovascular bundle. If you see in this picture, you have the artery and you have the veins on the two sides. This is what is the vena competence. 
Then the arteries are flanked by two vein satellite. Those are as we have shown. That is the vena competence. They function as a that is between the counter flow exchange of heat. That is the change of temperature or of the blood is exchanged between the arteries and the veins, and ion exchanges also there. So these are the two functions of these vena competence. That is when the blood vessels, they are veins and arteries, they are traveling side by side. They are uh, going to uh, do this. That is exchange of heat and the peripheral blood is uh, going to be cooler it takes back the warmth and then it goes back into the heart then these veins the facial sheets which are around it vein is less in size so uh, the walls are weaker so that is going to expand and allow the artery to accommodate a large amount of blood which is coming so and then this goes back into the vein and when it goes back into the vein because the walls are weaker and it is the arterial pulsation which is going to pump up the blood back into the heart and it helps the venous flow to contract. What are the different types of vessels? Anatomically you classify them as are the main artery, then arterioles, capillary, vene, veins, uh, venules and the veins if you see in this picture. The, then if you take it functionally you call them the conducting vessels these are the low volume high pressure these the large arteries are also called the conducting uh, vessels distribution are those medium size which distribute blood to all parts of the body then you have resistance vessels these resistance vessels are also called the arterioles because these arterioles they provide resistance and they give you the blood pressure to the body then there is exchange vessels because the capillaries have a thin wall so these are the capillaries or the sinusoids they are the exchange vessels because mm, things pass in and out of these swallow vessels and then you have the veins these are the reservoir or the capacitance vessels because the walls are thin so they can accommodate large amount of blood that is where they call the reservoir or the capacitance vessels and then you have shunt vessels vessels by which mm, bypass capillaries and sinusoids that is a bypass channels which are there Layers of the arteries, there are three basic layers, that is the intima, media, and adventitia. The intima is basically the simple squamous epithelium, then you have the basement membrane, and then you have the endothelial lining, lumen, uh, which is there, then you have the media, media may be artery, or it is uh, the muscular or the elastic artery, depending on that, the media is going to have the different layers, and then it has the internal elastic lamina separating uh, the uh, internal intima from the uh, media and then you have the external elastic lamina that is this yellowish in color that is uh, separating the media from the adventitia adventitia is basically connective tissue and maybe small amounts of uh, fibers in it or the muscles which are there so you have three layers that is tunica intima that is the inner one that is basically the squamous endothelium then you have the basal lamina and then basal lamina and then the internal elastic lamina that is this yellowish color and then you have the tunica media tunica media is the from the internal elastic lamina to the external elastic lamina and depending on the muscular artery or it is the elastic artery that is going to contain the structure in it then there are these changes according to it covered by the adventitia then you have the media uh, tunica media and then the Intima, intima, as I've told you, is containing your endothelium, then the subendothelial tissue, basement membrane, and then outside is the internal elastic lamina. Then the features of the vessel walls, blood, irrespective of the size vessels, the exception, the capillaries and the venules walls consist of these three concentric layers, which we've talked, tunica intima, tunica media, and tunica adventitia. The capillaries do not have it because they just have one. Till, uh, tunica intima is the innermost, it is the endothelium, that is the simple squamous epithelium that is called the endothelium, it lines the vasculatory supported by connective tissue. Media is muscle tissue and elastic fibers depending on what type of artery there is. Adventitia is the outer coat and consists of connective tissue nerves, vessel, those are your called your vasa mazorum. Large arteries, these are the conducting arteries. They, can, so they are basically elastic arteries in nature and they maintain the blood pressure these are because of the cardiac contraction aorta the arteries that originate from the arch of the aorta these are called the large arteries then you have the elastic arteries intima is the same but the media is, uh, is uh, fully equipped with the elastic lamina 
and in this case you have the internal elastic lamina which is also a double layer of the elastic fibers these blend with the internal uh, the elastic fibers of the media so you cannot make out very clearly about the internal elastic lamina in the elastic artery whereas in the large arteries because it is mostly muscular in its uh, structure so there you can make out the internal elastic lamina separated from the smooth muscle fibers and then you have the adventitia if you see this this is the large artery is the internal and the elastic artery you can see all these wavy fibers these are your elastic uh, layer and elastic fibers in the tunica media and you cannot make out the internal elastic lamina because both blend with each other and the bluish outside is your adventitia then is the medium vessel these are your muscular arteries these are also called the distributing arteries and they have uh, circular range smooth muscle fibers Uh, and you can make out the internal elastic uh, differentiating between the two most of the main arteries in the body are your uh, medium sized arteries then you have the muscular artery in this you have the endothelium then you have the muscular arteries that are predominant of smooth muscle and the adventitia which is your connective tissue if you see in this you can make out this baby border outside the endothelium that is your internal elastic lamina then you have the muscles and then is the adventitia so you can make out in this separate from the smooth muscle from the internal elastic lamina this is a muscular artery or the medium sized artery it is smooth muscle it is not uh, the skeletal muscle then this is again also the muscular artery this wavy margin that you see that is your internal elastic lamina as you can see it is very prominent but you could not make it out in the elastic artery then these are the small arteries or the arterioles they have a narrow lumen thick muscular walls filling uh, arterial pressure is regulated by the tone is maintained so they, they maintain the blood pressure this the structure is the muscles are larger than from the large arteries layer of one or two cell thick they are uh, arterioles also have the uh, plenty of these uh, smooth muscles arranged circumferentially and tight around the endothelium contractility controls the flow of blood into the capillary but they and where you have um uh, at the entrance you have these circularly arranged uh, smooth muscle which is going to be called controlling the amount of blood which is going to enter into the capillaries those are called your precapillary sphincters constriction of the lumen vessel lumen is throughout going to be myogenic that is contraction of the muscles so arterioles also have a muscular layer smooth muscle if you see in this this uh, a is the arteriole with the uh, smooth muscle and the venule you can see in the venule it's not very prominent where the blood is blood in the lumen and then the wall is just adventitia which is the endothelium and then outside is the adventitia so these venules they have a weaker wall that is why they are called the reservoir or the capacitance vessels blood capillaries they are the simple endothelial tubes connecting the arterial and venous sides of the circulation the exchange of materials so it is just simple squamous epithelium you can have different endothelial capillaries though it can be continuous that is there is no gap between the uh, simple epithelial cells or they can be having gaps that is they are called the fenestrated and when they are those fenestrations are larger gaps which are present where you have exchange of material the way you have it in the uh, you can have in the sinusoids uh, then where you in the kidney you can have it in the liver there 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 is the exchange of material there there are the fenestrated type of capillaries is present where no such muscle example in the muscle you have a continuous type of capillaries and called sinusoids these are the larger size of the capillary so depending on the functioning of the blood capillaries you have, can have the type of capillaries which are present it is can be continuous and fenestrated and the sinusoids so blood capillaries these are simple endothelial cells they can have fenestrations or pores which are covered by the diaphragm and these fenestrated type as you seen they are present in the kidney mucosa endocrine and exocrine glands where exchange is needed without fenestrations that is a continuous one where you do not need exchange there you have the continuous capillaries and there is for example brain muscles lung connective tissue continuous capillaries the permeability varies in the type of epithelium and different barriers which are there see this these are the capillaries this is the continuous capillary that is one there is no gap between the uh, two endothelial cells whereas in the fenestrated capillaries there is a gap that means the cells they do not overlap each other and that is closed by this 
diaphragm and then there is a gap so that it allows the material to in pass in and out those are called your fenestrated capillaries mm -hmm. both are simple squamous but there is going to be a pore which is covered by the diaphragm it's not exactly an opening but there is a discontinuity in the uh, continuity of these endothelial cells which produces and is covered by a diaphragm and that produces the pore and you can see that it's not there in the continuous capillaries these are sinusoids these sinusoids are uh, the wider uh, type of capillaries which are there and they have a lumen which contains the blood the expanded capillaries are large and irregular in shape they are discontinuous in their walls and the intimate contact between the blood and the parenchyma and you see sinusoids in the liver spleen bone marrow adeno hypophysis that is the interior part of the pituitary and the suprarenal medulla so these are just basically large size uh, capillaries and which are irregular in shape and they have discontinuous that is they are also type of fenestrated then what is uh, these are the different uh, types of vessels which are there starting from the first and that is the arteries arteries can be of different types one is large arteries which are elastic in nature then you have median sized arteries which are smooth in nature smooth muscle that is muscular arteries then you have these arterioles which again have smooth muscles in the walls and then you go on to the capillaries the size decreases that just have the simple squamous epithelium that is the endothelial lining the capillaries and you can divide the capillaries into different types that is uh, continuous that is the cells do not have a pore between them there is no gap between the different epithelial cells then they can be a fenestrated type of capillary these fenestrated type of capillaries are where you need an exchange and then you have these sinusoids these sinusoids are large size capillaries with a, a distorted lumen irregular in shape and then so these are the different vessels these are called the veins are called the capacitance vessels these are called capacitance vessels or the reservoir vessels because their wall is weak it's just the at through uh, the adventitia so that is why when they it contains the blood they can uh, accommodate a large amount so that is why they are called the capacitance uh, capacitance vessels then you have the arteriosclerosis arteriosclerosis is a condition which is, is leads to ischemia and infarction this arteriosclerosis is the thickening of the walls of the blood vessels which are there which leads to the narrowing narrowing of the uh, vessels that is there so that is going to lead into ischemia that is lack of blood and then infarction that is death of the cells the most common acquired disease which is of the arteries is arteriosclerosis that is the hardening of the arteries that leads to the elasticity decreases and atherosclerosis is building up of the fat mainly cholesterol Uh, into a plaque on the inner side of the vessel lumen, and that leads to the decrease in size of the vessel. Arterial narrowing and surface irregularity results in a thrombus. That is because the blood flow becomes slow. Then they can lead to a spot that is your plaque, and this plaque can be a site beginning site where your clotting can start. So local intravascular clot may occur. So that is it may lead to. a thrombus and this may occlude the artery if at times this thrombus can be dislodged and it can go to the other parts and be lodged there that it is good called as the embolus the consequences of this atherosclerosis is that it include ischemia and infarction that is lack of blood supply or less blood supply and then the cell death of the area which is supplied by that vessel so the heart uh, is important in the heart in the heart attacks that is called the ischemic heart disease or myocardial infarction in the brain it can be a stroke or in the parts of the limbs lack of blood supply cell death that is going to lead into the gangrene you see this this is the deposition of the plaque on the inner side that is the cholesterol deposition and the fat deposition leading to the narrowing of the vessel wall then this leads to a clot formation that is the smooth surface of the interior of the vessel becomes irregular this irregularity leads to the spotting or the sticking of the blood cells onto this irregular structure of the wall and that leads to the formation of the thrombus and this thrombus if it is dislodged it can result into embolism then there are the veins 
are low, generally return low oxygen from the capillary blood to the heart. The larger diameter ability to expand typically only 20% of the blood occupies the artery, whereas 80% in the veins. That is because of the larger size and they are from the reservoir vessels are atypical and they bring oxygenated, uh, the non oxygenated blood back to the heart but there is exception where you have the pulmonary veins it is the other way rise pulmonary veins contains the oxygenated blood and whereas our art pulmonary arteries they contain the other way around so and this because you do not have in the veins there is no uh, elastic fibers or no muscle fibers in the media except in the special veins so it's just the main way uh, layer that is prominent in the veins is the adventitia Intima is there, media is there, very thin connective tissue type chain, but the adventitia is the most prominent, which is just the, basically the connective tissue in nature. So it is uh, uh, soft in walls and it can accommodate a lot of blood. That is why where the blood about 80% is in the veins. And when a vein is cut, it will not project outwards. The blood will not spurt because it is not having any artery, uh, the muscles. Then smaller venules, medium veins, these are smaller capillaries form these and form the uh, medium sized veins, medium sized veins then form the larger veins in the limbs, especially the uh, because to help the promote the venous return back and acting against the gravity, uh, nature has provided uh, these venous valves uh, in the vessel walls, in the veins because they prevent a, a retrograde flow and so the blood is pushed up in one direction that is from below upwards towards the heart. So that is the function of these venous wells. The cephalic or basalic upper limb, greater small saphenous veins, all these have an, uh, uh, valves in them and the function of the valves and especially important in the lower limb is to act at anti-gravity and help the blood to go upwards and not go backwards when the vessels are relaxed. These are venules, smaller in size, you can see the femoral vein and these shows you the valves which are there. Then venules, medium sized veins, medium sized veins into large veins. These large veins are characterized by wide bundles of smooth muscles. They are well developed adventitia again in, but in special veins you can have the muscle fibers in the media. The veins are, veins are more abundant than arteries, walls are thinner diameters larger than the corresponding artery and they allow to expand. So it's said about belly to expand only 20% of the blood is in the arteries as I've said and 80% in the veins because their walls are thinner and they expand and that is why they're called the reservoir vessels. This is a large vein. If you can see this, the muscle layer is very small, media and the uh, interna is there but the adventitia is the largest one, most prominent layer. Veins tend to be double or multiple. Those which accompany the arteries, they are called the vena competence. As I told you, counter current, heat exchange, a bond arterial blood returning to the, uh, the cooler venous vessels as it returns to the heart from a cold limb. That is the exchange of the temperature is there. The warm arterial blood warming the cooler venous blood. The peripheral blood that is cooler as compared to the arterial blood which is coming from the interior of the body. So there where these two vena competence lie side by side, the function is important is that they act as counter current heat exchange and they maintain the blood uh, temperature. Then uh, they are accompanied by a, a facial sheath which covers these arteries and veins together and this also helps in contraction of the heart which that is driving pressure. This special facial sheath which is there covering the artery and the vein, this also helps the venous return, venous blood towards the heart and arterial venous pump that is it contracts push pressure and it allows the uh, blood to return backwards. What exactly is musculovenous pump? What are its important? What is its function? There is a um, uh, venous anastomosis, natural communication direct or indirect between the two veins. The bellies of the contracting skeletal muscles in the limbs compress the mill veins, milking the blood superiorly towards the heart. That is what is called the, the the veins which are present passing into the skeletal muscle in the limbs, these muscles are going to contract. That is what is called as milking. That is draining the blood from below to upwards towards the heart. That is called a musculovenous pump. That is the contraction of the muscles 
uh, fibers is helping in the aiding the venous return to go backwards upwards this is called the muscular venous pump that is contraction of the muscles that is why activity is recommended immediately after surgery so that the muscles they contract and they help the venous return to go back upwards and then there is prevention of retrograde pooling of blood and formation of the thrombus the valves of the veins break up the columns of the blood thus relieving more dependent part of the expressive pressure allowing venous flow to towards the heart so this is also helping up into the uh, flow of blood upwards so that is muscular venous pump is the muscles through which these veins pass they are going to can by the contraction of these they help to push the blood flow upwards and the second help is going to come from your uh, venous valves if you see this this is muscular venous pump this is valves in the veins prevent blood from uh, the uh, uh, blood due to gravity if you see this the blood doesn't go back again and skeletal muscle contracts it shortens the length but increases in girth so there are two ways where the uh, blood uh, how the blood flow is going to go upwards one is by the uh, the return of the blood from the periphery towards the heart is helped out or supported by these two one is the venous valves and the other is the skeletal muscle which contracts and then it pulls the blood upwards what is varicose veins varicose veins is when the vessel veins they lose their elasticity and their valves they become uh, I, I, I'm malfunctioning a weakened dilated veins under the pressure of support a column of blood against gravity results in varicose vein abnormally swollen that means the varicose veins or the valves which become incompetent then which normally they have to close when the blood flow is going upwards or when it is uh, according to the gravity it is pulled downwards but and the valves close and they do not allow the blood to come back downwards but if the valves are incompetent they will not close down and they will not prevent a barrier uh, present a barrier to the retrograde flow of the blood and that will come downwards and so that will help in pooling of the blood and this pooling of the blood results in what we call as the varicose veins the legs become swollen twisted veins and they are dilated and tortuous this is called the varicose veins most of the seen in the leg because it is from here it has to blood has to face the pressure of the uh, vein gravity so if the valves are the most important factor if they are not functioning it will not prevent the retrograde flow and then you can see the swollen twisted veins have a greater caliber sizes more than the rest cusps do not meet been destroyed by some disease incompetent valves so this becomes varicose veins also occur in the presence of degenerated fascia and cavity con contraction so the fascia the muscles the valves incompetent all that is going to make this muscular venous pump ineffective so it is a very important factor that this muscular venous pump or the varicose veins they help in returning the blood flow and if this these functions are not uh, there working normally what you end up is varicose veins the blood goes back backwards it pools the veins are dilated and they can become tortuous and then small amount of fluid also passes out in the tissue so this is varicose veins you see in this picture these are the dilated tortuous vessels that you can normally you do not see your super basically these varicose veins are present in your superficial valve because the blood has to flow from the the when they coming from the arterial blood the arterial blood is going to go from the arterial uh, from deep to the superficial and when it has to return backwards it is from superficial to deep so these varicose veins they become prominent and you see them on the surface because it is your superficial veins when your valves become incompetent the blood flow doesn't go from the superficial to the deep but it is pulling up staying in the superficial vessels so this becomes dilated and tortuous vessels with veins which is called the varicose veins so those were the different types of vessels which are there the different size of the vessels their function of the vessels then uh, what is can the pathology be that is arteriosclerosis or atherosclerosis arteriosclerosis is the thickening of the vessel wall which does not allow it to contract and atherosclerosis is the irregularity in the inner side of the vessel wall by the deposition of this cholesterol and then this leads to the deposition of the blood cells forming the thrombus and if this can lodge dislodge it can go into and form the embolism 
so and the other thing is the varicose veins veins where it is present in the veins because of the incompetent venous valves the flow has to go from if the arteries it is deep to superficial and in the veins uh, when venous return back it is superficial to deep and if the valves are incompetent this is the when the muscles contract from the deep to the superficial the blood flow is going to go backwards but that door is shut by these venous valves preventing your incompetent valves uh, preventing your retrograde flow and preventing venous a very goes veins and if this door is not competent to close and allow it allows blood leaking back into the veins superficial veins that is going to result into the varicose veins then is an important topic that is anastomosis what exactly is anastomosis what are the different types of anastomosis and what are the basic importance criteria to types of anastomosis can be there two to three most important because we are talking about the cardiovascular system so for us the vascular anastomosis is important that is the shunt vessels two or more vessels they anastomose with each other that is there is a link between basically anastomosis is defined as the communication between the lumen of the two tubes through collateral vessels that is there is a link between the different branches of the a tubular structure tube i'm saying because it can be vascular it can be an organ or it can be a nerve so when you say vascular if two vessels they are anastomosing with each other they are linking up with each other on the sides that is going to be a vascular anastomosis then you can have a link bypassing the diseased area and you link up the healthy portion from a channel on the sides that is going to be an organ anastomosis when you do it in it is can happen normally that is in the pathology on traumatic or it can be in surgery and then they case a nervous anastomosis is not a true anastomosis but certain times certain fibers may uh, join in the other nerve and then that will be what we call as the nerve anastomosis what is the vascular pattern or anastomosis of blood vessels a union between the distal end of blood vessels permitting free communication Uh, between the arterioles and the venules that is the vascular pattern or anastomosis of the vessel it may occur between arteries and arteries it may occur between arteries and veins arterioles or venules depending on the function what do the uh, anastomosis what does the anastomosis do anastomosis basically it equalizes the pressure because the amount of blood flow on different sides would be equal so the pressure would be uh, equal then it provides an alternative route of blood flow that is if one vessel is blocked and the area supplied would be depleted of blood flow that is prevented by this anastomosis that is if a from main vessel you have two vessels which are being supplied by the a and the b branches if the a branch is blocked then it is this bilateral collateral channel that will take up the blood instead of bypassing the channel a and then taking it to the tissue required so that is it provides important function is it provides an alternative route for the blood flow if one vessel is blocked and um, if there is a link then it can take a, another route and take the blood to the vessels uh, to the area which is to be supplied and then it also equalizes the pressure by giving the equal amount of blood in this this so alternative route via anastomosis that is called a collateral circulation that is A, a circulation other than the main vessel it is there the different links up between the different vessels that is called a collateral that is something which is going on side by side so anastomosis is basically a circulation which is going on side by side to the main vessel so allowing blood initially there would be not a ample amount of blood flow in this collateral circulation but it's just a minimal uh, makeshift arrangement and small amount of blood flows into it but if there is a blockage in one of the major vessels this collateral circulation becomes overactive and the blood is provided by this uh, these collateral circulations more as compared to the uh, main vessel anastomosis or communications communications basically uh, you can use for the organs or you can also use for the blood vessels between multiple branches of an artery they provide numerous potential detours that is a bypass if in from one channel uh, they don't they don't go it they can go from the other channel channel b they can go from the channel c that is uh, these are the links between all the different ways if you want to go to avasina medical college you have two or three ways roads which 
or lead to avicenna so that is the way in this if you want to supply blood to a muscle two or three um, vessels are there which supply blood to the muscle so the blood has the capacity or uh, um, tendency to go through any of these vessels that is what is anastomosis that is it is supplying blood from many routes it's not that just one route and if that one route is stopped then the circulation to that area is going to be stopped that is what exactly is anastomosis multiple branches of an artery provide numerous potential detours for blood flow the usual pathway if it is obstructed by compression due to the position of the joint pathology or circle ligation then the side vessels which are there the small offshoots which are there they supply blood main channel is occluded the smaller alternative channels increase in size over a period of time that is if it is gradual obstruction that is if gradually the vessel main vessel is being blocked then the side channels will be more active and they uh, over a period of time and that is the collateral circulation is developing more that is it is taking over the function of the main artery so it ensures the blood supply to the structures distal to that block it collateral pathways require time to open up so this because i said it is going to give a minimal blood circulation but if uh, it has to go tissue to depend on this collateral circulation then it has to open up gradually and uh, gradually and take up the function majority of the function of supplying blood to the distal portions so collateral pathways require time to open insufficient to compensate for sudden occlusion that is if something bl uh, blocked occurs overnight that is collateral circulation or the anastomosis is not going to be very effective though small amount of circulation will pass through these collaterals or the anastomosis but it cannot survive that tissue which was being supplied by these vessels it cannot survive on that uh, small amount of shunting of the blood from the main to the collateral circulation but only it is minimal of efficiency where collateral circulations do not exist or they are inadequate to replace the main channels then that is the arteries are not there with the anastomosis that is what we call as a true anatomic terminal arteries or the end arteries there is no anastomosis or it is inadequate those are labeled as your end arteries occlusion of an end artery is going to result in complete stoppage of the circulation which is being supplied to that area retina is a very good example if the blood supply to the retina is stopped because that ophthalmic artery is the end artery this is going to lead to blindness of the retina where they are not true terminal arteries functional that means ineffective the anastomosis is there but it is ineffective it is not very good anastomosis those we label as functional terminal arteries that was an occlusion that was the anatomical that is structurally there the vessels which are linking up but in this the anastomosis is there but it is so small that it cannot take over the function and it cannot fully make the tissue survive so that is what we label as functional terminal arteries that is because of the ineffective anastomosis it supplies segments of the liver kidney spleen this may also exist in the heart so this type can be present anywhere then what are end arteries end arteries are anatomic terminal arteries no anastomosis at arterial or capillary level source source of the area that is supplying occlusion to the artery causes necrosis central artery of retina is a very good example because it leads to blindness forms of these and uh, anastomosis end arteries can be capillary anastomosis that is functional in end arteries behave as end arteries but the capillaries may communicate so that is a sort of an insufficient capillary anastomosis can be there there can be in uh, insufficient capillary anastomosis in the end arteries coronary arteries poorly established anastomosis so the end arteries can be anastomosis functional or it can be anatomical the anastomosis is there but it is insufficient capillary anastomosis functional in the end arteries arteries behave as end arteries but the capillaries may communicate but they do not function as end arteries you see this anatomic and functional end arteries the two vessels coming to supply an area there is no anastomosis between the two so if you ligate one vessel the vessel will not take the blood to the other side but even in a functional one if it is an anatomic one but if it is a functional one 
the small amount of linking that is there that will take the blood circulation to the other artery which is blocked so that is the difference between you can say that there is minimal uh, blood supply or the minimal anastomosis that is what is called as functional in arteries and that where is no vessel at all between the two main vessels that is anatomic end arteries so this picture shows you very clearly what is an anastomotic end arteries and what is functional end arteries then anastomosis is the communication between two vessels through collateral channels that is two shunt vessels it can be anastomosis can be between the two arteries arterio arterial it can be between the veins arterio venous or it can be veno venous that is anastomosis or linking up between the two veins which are there these are the different types of anastomosis you can see the main vessel that is giving smaller branches then these branches are linked up to each other and then they enter into the tissue that is supplying to the intestines in this there is the main artery second picture you can see the main artery giving going to the veins that is giving smaller vessels which are linking the main artery to the veins and this where these capillaries through the capillaries are where the capillaries start you have these smaller circulatory muscle that is your smooth muscles controlling the blood flow uh, only opening up when it is needed that means these pre capillary sphincters they do not they allow just the minimal amount of blood flow through that anastomosis but only they will open up if that area needs enough blood and these pre capillary sphincters they will then open up and then these will control the or send the blood flow there are certain vessels which do they do not uh, absolutely devoid of blood circulation but small vessels they do allow certain amount of blood through this and because they have to survive the tissue on to the uh, the uh, where the these vessels are supplying so those are called for the minimal blood supply these are called your thoroughfare channels that means small amount of blood is going to go from the arteries to the veins but they are not the major supply the side vessels they are blocked their circulation is blocked by these pre capillary sphincters so arterial anastomosis is major of the arteries there with others are branched to form the anastomosis affected by arterio arterial anastomosis muscular arteries plugula villus joint plantar arches collateral circulation is there these can be of two types that arterial circulation if it is similar vessels it is going to be called as uh, homocladic anastomosis of the same artery that is a one artery anastomosis with a uh, same uh, with the with the anastomosis that is going to be the homocladic and if it is between two different arteries it is going to be called the heterocladic anastomosis actual arterial anastomosis can be of different types the pre arterial level that is before the starting of the arterioles one can be end to anastomosis that is two arteries open directly into each other that is end to end anastomosis before the arterioles start anastomosis by convergence that is two arteries one on each side they unite together and they form a link up that is unite to form a single artery that is a vertebral artery forming the basilar artery at the base of the brain that is going to be called as an anastomosis by convergence one is end to end that is the two arteries they link up at before going into the arterial level that is directly into each other by convergence is the two arteries they unite to form one artery and then you have the transverse anastomosis that is short artery links up to larger arteries transversely that is going to form the transverse anastomosis that is short arteries they link up to vessels which are passing side by side and smaller transverse are vessels they link up these vessels these are called the transverse anastomosis then you have the potential arterial anastomosis potential capacity that is the vessels they do not have actual anastomosis but they have the capacity to form the anastomosis that is if it is required so that is we call as potential arterial anastomosis some arteries anastomose at terminal arterioles in blood normally brain heart joint uh, when gradual occlusion occurs one of the artery due to disease is sufficiently enlarged and then this provides collateral blood to the area supplied by the occluded 
good. That is, it had the capacity and it gradually opens up with passage of time. But if it is sudden, ligation of the disease, if the vessel is suddenly blocked and antibiotic channel cannot provide, the collateral circulation will not be that effective because it has not time to open up the different smaller channels which are going to form the pattern for supplying blood to the vessels further on. So if occlusion is sudden, ligation disease, mastomotic channel cannot provide collateral circulation. It will not be open up or it will be opening up, but it will not be that effective as it is effective if there is gradual because more vessels would be open up slowly. They will take time and open up in the circulation. So this is because the vessels have a potential capacity for the anastomosis to open. So, but this will be if this potential arterial anastomosis if the occlusion is gradual or then uh, sudden. So you know venous anastomosis between the two vessels which are there that is going to form the veins between the two veins or the tributaries of the veins that is portosystemic anastomosis between the veins inferior vena cava and the portal circulation there's an anastomosis between that superficial and deep veins there too veins they have an anastomosis they're linking up dorsal arch of the uh, foot and the hand they have a linking up between them that is the veno venous anastomosis that is between the veins then you can have a link up between the arteriovenous anastomosis that is between the arteries and the venous circulation. Artery and the vein connected not via capillaries but they have an independent pathway that is bypass the capillary bed and sinusoids directly to the venous system. So your uh, arterioles, capillaries and sinusoids they are bypassed and the arteries connect to directly to the venous system. That is when it happens in the arteriovenous anastomosis. Serves as shunt of arterial blood directly to the veins. That is called the arteriovenous shunt. Or AB shunts are numerous in the skin. They have an important role in conserving the body temperature. So that is cold blood from the venous circulation is replaced by the warm blood from the arteries. Please stop talking. There is disturbance in the transmission. The skin, they have an important role in conserving the body heat. Smooth muscles close and open the shunts, that is the vessels which are there so it doesn't pass through the uh, capillary bread and the sinusoids. Then these are different types. The arteriovenous anastomosis can be of the vanish preferential thoroughfare channels. Simple arteriovenous anastomosis can be there or complex arteriovenous anastomosis. That is a twisted type of arteriovenous that is glomerular are present in the fingertips. This basically controls the temperature or warms up the body temperature in the hands when there is cold. What are preferential thoroughfare channels? Connect the terminal arteriole or the venue and they give side branches in the form of capillaries as pre-capillary sphincters and those are called your preferential thoroughfare channels. They provide alternative routes for blood flow when the circulation is not required. And those uh, channels, that means they just give you bare minimum circulation so that the tissue can survive. That is, if there is no time for uh, circulation or the anastomosis is not required, it is this channel which is going to allow a small amount of blood passing through that area so that it supplies or makes the tissue survive. That is, those vessels are called the preferential thoroughfare channels. That is, they are passing through that anastomosis and they are allowing the circulation or the blood flow to go to that area to make it survive. Then is the glomus. Glomus is a um, special body. As I said, it is an apparatus component of the dermis, layer of the skin involved in body temperature regulation because how in cold, how does your hand or the feet, they become warmed up. That is because of this. Uh, the glomus consists of an arteriovenous shunt surrounded by a capsule of connective tissue, most numerous in the fingers and the toes that keep your body warm. Meta arterioles, what are meta arterioles? These can deliver blood directly to venous or a capillary bed according to the local demand and condition. So these are meta arterioles before the beginning of the arterioles. When functional demand is low, blood flow is largely limited to the bypass channels. That means they are going to pass through the uh, outer terminal vessels and they do not go into the anastomosis. Periodic opening and closing, that is of the capillaries. 
to diff irrigate the different parts that is controlled by the precapillary sphincters. So, and they determine the vascularity of a tissue. Then, what is complex Arteri arterial venous anastomosis? This is what is glomerula that is in the hands, it is found in the hands, digital pads, nail bed, side that is a sinus coiled vessel enclosed in the connective tissue. Sheet they function as regulation of blood flow, regulation of body temperature in that area by the muscle, and it is under the control of the, uh, the circulatory autonomic system. And as you can see, the dog is tired, it, it pants. That is opening up, that is by the way to control the body temperature, the cooling effect of the tongue. Preferential thoroughfare channels, if you see this main vessel, it is connects the terminal arterial venial to give the capillaries. These are your, uh, and the opening of this at the end, you have these precapillary sphincters. They form this microcirculatory unit, alternate blood flow according to the need, and the otherwise small amount of blood is passing through these thoroughfare channels all the time and they, the tissue does not die up. They are present all over the body. So what is the difference between a thoroughfare channel and a true capillary? Pre-capillary sphincters are present in the true capillaries. In the thoroughfare channels, no pre-capillary sphincters are present. Smooth muscle is absent. That is present in the thoroughfare channels. Small caliber thoroughfare channels are larger compared to the true capillaries. They, these two capillaries open on demand metabolism according to the need of the activity of the body. These thoroughfare channels are kept open all the time because they are providing blood. Because the capillaries on the side or the anastomosis that is closed, they have blood. It, Papa. Please, no noise. Why are you disturbing the class? They, they are open uh, continuously and uh, these thoroughfare channels and the uh, two capillary where the activity is more they're going to open where the capillary activity that arise as branches of thoroughfare channels at the precapillary sphincters origin to precapillary sphincters of the true capillary these start these two capillaries start from the uh, main cap vessels, but these thoroughfare channels they give rise to the precapillary sphincters. Simple atriovenous anastomosis, direct straight communication between the branches of the small muscular veins. There is vessels have muscular coat, narrow lumen, and the control is by the nervous system. In the newborn, because there are few atrovenous anastomosis, but they develop rapidly over the years. In the old age, this finishes off atrophy, sclerosis, and diminution number. These factors are the reason why the body temperature of an old person or a child that cannot be maintained. They are less efficient in body temperature regulation at these two extremes because atrovenous anastomosis is less in the child and the old age it atrophies and sclerosis. So they are not able to uh, regulate their own body temperature. Then is the lymphoid system. The lymphoid system constitutes an overflow of system that provides from the drainage of the surplus tissue fluid that was passed out into the tissues and that over surplus is then leaked back plasma protein to the bloodstream for the removal of the debris and back into the circulation. This is the different Things. There are lymphatic vessels and lymph nodes, which are there. Different types of uh, lymph channels are there on all parts of the body. Again, the same. They are superficial and deep, from the superficial to the deep, and then they enter back into the blood. Lymph is one of the components. Then you have lymph nodes in this system, and then you have the lymphocytes, and then you have the lymphoid organs, which are their main ones. Those are your thymus, red bone marrow spleen, tonsil, solitary and aggregate, aggregated lymphoid tissue. So these are the components of the lymphatic system. Lymph, that is the fluid which is there. Lymph nodes, the cellular structure through which the um, fluid is going to pass. You have the lymphocytes, you have the lymph organs and the lymphatic. Components of the lymphoid system is lymphatic plexuses. Networks of lymphatic capillaries originate in the intercellular spaces. 
surplus tissue fluid, plasma, bacteria, left vessel form. They have endothelium and lacking a basement membrane, so they are kept open by uh, the uh, amount of connective tissue which keeps the uh, walls of the lymphatics from collapsing. So they are uh, lacking a basement membrane as a network. Abundant valves are present, living individuals giving lymphatic appearance or beaded appearance. Then you have the lymph nodes. Lymph vascular system collects fluid from the tissue spaces, returns it to the blood lymph, lymphatic capillaries, then the lymphatic vessels, it has valves, then it to the node, the lymphatic ducts, that is the main ones, that is the return to the thoracic duct and the right lymphatic duct and then passing through the lymphoid organs. What is the role of lymphatic system? The cancer spread grows into the area. The tissue can extend from one tissue to the other. Metastasis, dissemination of tumor cells to the distant size from the primary tumor. That can be there via this lymphatic system. A direct feeding of serous membranes. Lymphatic spread, most common. Loose cells of the tumor travel via the lymph vessels trapped by the lymph nodes. These are the secondary cancer sites and one of their two, the lymphatic system forms a very important cancer spread route. Cancer cells block the lymph vessels. If the vessels are blocked, tissue fluid stays in the tissues and this leads into a lymphatic edema and that is, they are going to be swollen. Then the lymph cancer can spread via the blood, most common route for less common but for more malignant tumors. Most common route for less common but more malignant tumors, that is, it spreads by blood vessels, vessel veins, thin walls and less resistance for common route than the arteries. Veins are the common route from where it is going to spread by other veins. Live lungs, most common site of a secondary sarcomas. So veins are important one because they have less resistance to, than the arteries, so it is through the veins and blood spread is by a blood vessel. Most common route for less common but more malignant tumors. And it is commonest is your venous system which spreads the blood at uh, the root. That finishes the cardiovascular system and the lymphatic system. All the different types of vessels which are there, what is the function, what is the basic structure, the detail of the structure you will be studying in pathology, then what is the osmosis, what are the different types of vessels are there, what is the link between arterial and venous vessels, how to then classify them, and then what is lymphatic system, and then what is the function of the lymphatic system. Okay, thank you.